So thanks for having me for this webinar again. And and uh, I'm just talking about one one perspective about the uh, uh, how our nation in Finland is going uh, to the age of AI. And this is just a one example and just one one perspective for that. So so all in all, as we are discussing about AI technologies, the the transformation itself isn't about technological issues or AI or anything like that. It's about how we are uh, putting our citizens at the center of the whole transformation. And that's why we are talking about human centricity. And the, the biggest challenges comes from that, that like uh, nowadays this human centricity or user driven is just stitched on top of everything and on, on top of every processes and, and organizations. And, and we are still not uh, uh, changing the way we do things. And this is all, what is Aurora AI all about. And I will discuss about that more further in, in this 15 minutes uh, period. Uh, this, this AI Finland is sort of an umbrella in Finland that, that gathers uh, like different kind of aspects about how, how Finland is approaching this AI AI uh, subject as a whole. So, so there are like three different corners for that. Uh, of course, competitive business and industry that drives economical growth is one big issue. Also efficient public sector that holds public services. But, but in general, we need to figure out what, what we mean by well-functioning society as a whole. So we just cannot <coughs> look after just uh, public sector and business and the industry at their uh, from the different parts because all of those organizations are mixed in 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 our society and and when we are building human centricity or human centric society we need to consider this as a whole from perspective of people's lives and that's why we have built this aurora ai uh, initiative that has have had its uh, preliminary states and and now we are on on the on the edge of of having a new government here in Finland we have actually uh, the next sunday we have the elections here for parliament elections and after that hopefully s as soon as possible we will have the new government that is hopefully willing to proceed with the human centricity in Finland but but in order to achieve this we need some sort of a mission or a purpose or why, why do we like to do things? And actually, the, at the heart of everything in this change is, is the question of how we are uh, empowering people and, and, and citizens to, to uh, uh, take care of their own well-being as well as their uh, loved one loved ones so so basic idea is that normally we have been focused on building uh, effective governance or or uh, economical growth and the the uh, like these peoples and citizens haven't been actually a subject they they have been a, an object object for for uh, governances and now we are shifting that so we are putting these peoples as as a subject so so that's why we need to consider everything uh, in new pers from new perspective and of course the like the the idea about nudging people uh, is in this uh, purpose or or mission it it's all about like inner nudge so how people are trying to understand uh, what they really should be doing in their own personal activities in order to to take care of their own lives more better in order not to need any kind of public services in order to stay healthy, for example. <coughs> and we have been used for two years in Finland this uh, model. We have been called it Stiglitz model. It's, it's uh, Stiglitz et al. You can find the report from European Commission. Uh, it has been uh, uh, written like five years ago or so. And it, it's not new. It, it's just a basic idea that well-being is multidimensional. And that is actually one of the biggest challenges when, when we are transforming the idea. Because we have been divided, uh, our society, into these sectors or, or 
uh, if you like if you like ministries and these ministries hold their own own officials and organizations and of course we also have municipalities and and all all of those uh, these organizations uh, provides their own services for these citizens and that is actually the basic and the biggest challenge uh, when it goes to the human centricity so it's like a set of strolls it, uh, for these people where they these these public and and private sector organizations provides their own services for these people and actually people doesn't want to have like tens of thousands of same kind of services rather they like they like to to uh, have smooth and 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 uh, uh, great life where everything should go smoothly from their perspective and that's why as 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 everyone everybody know about the basic idea about my, my data so we need of course uh, the basic understanding about these people and now we come to the um, idea that uh, that uh, changes the way we look uh, my data from perspective of governance we are not we uh, we don't like too much the idea that that uh, governance controls people's lives rather people should control their own lives so that that mean also means that people should control their own my data so we don't like the idea that that we are just building like big brother society where governance controls everything from every data from people's perspective or or we don't like the idea that companies like, like one or two company can can uh, uh, control people's data so so that they can really control what these people are really doing so we are just empowering all kinds of data for these people to 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 uh, attract new kind of set of services based on this my data principle and this is just a basic idea that if if this is the the right setup then then these services should be gathered around uh, this this multi-dimensional set of data that comes from from perspective of these people themselves and <coughs> that is something that we have been uh, <coughs> studied last half year and we have been uh, allocated one million for this preliminary stage and now we have the uh, report preliminary report ready and it's on its on its uh, commentary uh, state and and at the same time we are wrapping up the whole whole project for the upcoming years 2019 to between 2023 and hopefully we are finding a way how how uh, Finland should should proceed into this kind of approach and and really implement it so we have we have uh, 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 test bed already and we have some test version for this for this uh, initiative and we have been doing this initiative like very co-creative way so we have public private people partnership all over all over these these uh, um, uh, uh, trials so we have like big bigger bigger organization for example like center and we have small startups we have public organizations from state and municipalities as well and third sector as well so that that is the basic strength for this kind of approach you need to cooperate you you cannot like push from ministerial perspective about this kind of change you need everybody on board and and th this is the way we are just shifting the the uh, way we look at our society if we look at from perspective of people then we need to divide some, that that uh, life some sort of a way and that's why we have been used this this life event approach and this as uh, in general life event approach isn't too too uh, weird it's it's very normal way to to start look at public services but in in uh, Finnish perspective we are uh, looking this life event as a cross-sectoral uh, event where you need to utilize any kind of services and this is just an example if you change jobs without an un unemployment pre period then you are a proactive society where you can empower people to understand how they can shift jobs without 
any unemployment period. And uh, nowadays, of course, you can do it already, and, uh, but it's based on your own activity. So you, ha you can find these different kind of services, whether or not it's LinkedIn or, or any public service or third service or anything. You can go and, and start to study, for example, new, new, new uh, uh, um, practice for, for something. For example, you study AI and start, to start uh, working with AI. But uh, in this, this uh, uh, proceeding or, or concept, we have been introduced idea about digital me, where you can you can uh, utilize your own data for for these people uh, for these organizations to provide uh, necess necessary services for you. So Aurora AI is actually a, a an, an smart smart network that just gathers. Uh, any kind of services together so so these these services are are already there some of them are very smart some of them are very dumb but still we can we can connect those so as you said about this this isa project project as a whole it's all about semantic interoperability how how these services interact and we have been doing this this uh, for some for some time right now and that is the focus in Aurora AI. We are looking after when these people go through these life events, how these, these peop, people-oriented or, or human-centric service ecosystems are formed around these life events. And it, but in this, we have been uh, just studying three different kind of life events. You can, you can introduce any kind of life event here. So this is just an... Uh, uh, regular framework for any kind of life event and and you need different kind of approaches for example you need to understand first of all what kind of customers or people you have in that kind of li any kind of life event you are willing to get smooth in this image on top left you you see a segmentation data of customer information in in one of our cities and, and there are uh, students gathered around six different uh, clusters, and these clusters we know their people's multidimensional well-being, and we don't know particularly what people are there. So this is the basic uh, shift between like uh, government-centric uh, society uh, versus human-centric society. So people themselves know in which cluster they are and we as a governance know that what kind of clusters we have and we already have the trial version of that and it's I'm sorry that is on in Finnish because we are just studying it in 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 our nation and we also have uh, like in uh, on the top top center these bots there are like five different kind of bots that that have been introduced it's uh, on, on their different kind of maturity level. So those aren't just normal chatbots. They are like bots that try to understand the people's well, multidimensional well-being. They are like Stiglitz bots, <laughs> if you if you if you like. So so it's general bot that tries to understand what kind of uh, status you have in your own life and what cluster you are belonging to, and and by that you we can attract. Uh, just in time services for these people and 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 uh, mass mass customize these services whether or not they are public or private services and on on, on top right you you cannot see that too much but there is actually uh, one discussion where is, where is a divorce uh, lawyer lawyers has been uh, given their their uh, understanding about the uh, life event of divorce so so uh, these cha these bots are trying to understand uh, these people's uh, well-being and after that they can provide and attract different kind of service ecosystems around these people people who are divorcing of course we have been also studied token economy where the, uh, crop, crypto currencies and and uh, that kind of issues are very interesting to understand whether or not we can incentivize these smart services to cooperate uh, with with their uh, with each other so you can see 
the service chain that creates value for the customer that is that is uh, at at the top top center where are actually we have been introduced three uh, private sector organizations that holds their own smart services that are really cooperating for these people and of course the ethical basis for intelligence and autonomous applications should be involved so we have we have smart services of that for that as well so we cannot we cannot uh, plug in a, any kind of like bad or bad willing on or unethical services into this this kind of network we need to be sure that that every service are ethical ethically based based uh, when they are serving people so this is a huge shift for for uh, way how our public governance and 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 actually the the society as a whole functions so we are not just building like smart services into organizations that just provides their own services we are just changing the way how our organizations cooperate for the people and that's why we need these these um, uh, well-being um, uh, situational pictures or images or clusters uh, and we need to get everybody involved in order for for these organizations to to change their own way of working so that is basically what is aurora ai is all about and i'm happy to answer any kind of questions now or or in q a session thanks okay thank you very much alexi um as we said we have one question right now and more questions afterwards in the q a session uh, everybody feel free to type your questions in the chat box at any time i saw that one question was there uh, already arriving it's about the report from the preliminary study whether that is in english and whether it's publicly available yes yes and yes you, you can find it in english and and uh in it's publicly avail available uh, we can send a link for that 